This talk is NGRX selectors or how to not worry about your store structure. Uh, but the big question is, how do I structure this store for an entire application? You might have a component and it renders a list of current orders. So the obvious thing you could think is like, okay, well, I'll just take this list of current orders and I'll make that a custom slice in the store. But then let's say you have another component and this component is responsible for rendering past orders. So you're like, all right, I guess I'll take that component state and I'll store that in my store as well. But then I needed to store all orders. And this is where it got kind of weird for me. You may look at your code base like I have many times, and you come back to your reducer and you think, what is happening? Who even wrote this? So at this point, I was kind of like, maybe we're missing something. What do we miss? With selectors, we solve all the problems that we ran into before. We think that selectors are a fundamental concept of NGRX, that they are, there's not just three circles to NGRX, there's four. And selectors are really, really simple. So you, it's easy to learn them at first because they're just queries to your store. Selectors provide us with a lot of great benefits. Yeah, and the few things that we should ideally look for with these benefits, we get a nice API for composing our view models. We can reduce our action boilerplate, which is a hot topic at the moment. And we can simplify our reducers. And we also have memoization. And we also have the routing state as well. It's actually really easy to refactor your store for selectors as well. So before we had these three slices of state and we were filtering out. And you know what, this is a lot to keep track of. We don't want to do this, so let's just delete them. And instead of keeping track of three pieces of state, I'm going to keep track of one. So how do we actually get the view model? This is where we introduce create feature selector and its sibling, create selector. And using the selector is uh, really easy to do. All you do is inject the NGRX store into your component, and then what you can do is just use the select method and uh, just pass in your selector. And so before we had three view models sitting in our store, and we switched that to having three selectors. And the really big benefit of these three selectors is that they are reactive. Rather than having to loop through a thousand items just to retrieve one, we would rather just be able to quickly access one item. And that is something you can do with the entity pattern. And the entity pattern is really good for fast object lookups. If I can look at something, uh, try to get something that's a 10,000 item in the list, it's just as fast as getting the first item in the list. And it really simplifies our reducers because it gives us a standard way that we can write them and we don't have to worry if we're doing it the wrong way. But where the entity pattern really shines is when you use it with the router. I don't want any routing code in my components. Like routing code belongs in route guards or resolvers. But the great thing about NGRX is, is that you can actually use routing code with selectors. So you want to follow the entity pattern. Embrace selectors. You want to avoid view models in your store. And like we've just seen, using them all together with the root state really improves the state tree and your selectors. So when you're thinking about, well, how do I structure my store? Well, it's not how do you structure it. It's how we ask for it. So the next time you start an NGRX app where you have to go back and refactor a reducer, don't worry about your store structure. Just think selectors first.